today on Be Something Wonderful. When I stopped the insanity, my desired reality came to me. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, welcome back. Big video this morning, so let's get started. A session yesterday, a follow-up session from a client, that that's how she opened up the session. She said, Tom, when I finally stopped the insanity, my desired reality came to me, just like you said. And this is what she talked about. She goes, oh my God, Tom, you were so right. I was looking out at reality and then finding, creating beliefs of why it's showing me something I'm wanted versus just assuming and believing in what I want and looking out as reality. It changed everything. Right. We went, there were all sorts of things from her dating life where she uses a um, app, a dating app and already, you know, having a list of things that she wants, which is fine in a person. But then looking out at reality and finding things that are not that she was looking for them, right? Looking for evidence of non-fulfillment and then in her work the same way, looking why, why she can't work with that person. We're looking for why that project won't work out, right? She thought she was imagining from a state of wish fulfilled and, and imagine within everything working out, imagining that she's with that ideal, she meets that ideal person on the dating app, but yet she was looking out to find the, but to find all the things, all the la lack of evidence that it's actually happening. Do you see it? It's not that reality hasn't moved yet. Nothing is changing. And that was in all areas. It was in a work area. It was in that dating area. It was with money. It was with all sorts of things. It changed everything, right? So, so looking out at reality and then finding, creating beliefs of why it showed me something I wanted, you're going to find them. You're going to create the belief around that because you're looking for non-fulfillment. Even though you think you're looking for wish fulfilled, you look at you, you feel like you're looking for evidence that it's fulfilled, but you're really looking for evidence that it's not. Every time I want to really hit this. This was a big session yesterday. We talked about a lot about what I'm going to go over today and also on a video on one of the channels where I hit some of this stuff. When you stop looking out there for proof of fulfillment, fulfillment is all you'll see. This is what A Course in Miracles was getting at when he said, when you want only love, you will see nothing else. When you want only fulfillment, you will see nothing else. Yes, she wanted that, but she was looking for the evidence that it wasn't fulfilled. Do you see it? Every time you look out there and then and think, assume and believe and say something, uh, say nothing has moved, you create that reality. I want to hear this because I hear this from so many of you. Right. And even we all have been there. I've been there. Right. I get it. Every time you look out there, think, assume, believe and say nothing has moved. You create that reality. You are reality. There's no choice that it can't move. You collapse the waveform of probabilities. And that is what reality is to you. Right. There is no out there out there. John Wheeler said it. So you're looking as reality when looking for proof. You're really looking for evidence of the unwanted. That's what she discovered. It was an oh my God moment, right? She really got it, right? So when you, you are looking for evidence of non-fulfillment versus seeing only your wish fulfilled, only seeing what you want to see, right? Big difference, big shift within her in all areas of her life. She's seeing fulfillment everywhere because it is everywhere. There really is only unity. That's what the ancients meant. Right. It really is about remember your perceiving is reality. It's the only reality. We're not even talking about perceptions. It's just perceiving is are the perceptions and, and you as the perceiver. It's everything. I really want you to understand this. So you're putting reality there because you are reality. You're putting those things that don't meet those requirements. You're putting the non fulfillment there. Right. Your perceiving is the only reality. The unwanted and undesired circumstances don't exist outside your agreement with them. Somehow you're agreeing with them or you wouldn't be seeing them. Period. Right. You're agreeing that I, I know there's going to be evidence of that unwanted out there. I know that other shoes going to drop. I know it's too good to be true. Right. Let me perceive no differences today. A course in miracles. One, one, one. As Ernest Holmes would say in, in The Science of Mind, let me perceive no differences today. Such a powerful statement. 
so subtle but so powerful, A Course in Miracles. Because you, you are perceiving differences and perceiving is the only reality. Right? You're looking for them, you expect them. Right? Even though you want fulfillment, when you look out there to see if conditions have changed or if your life has gotten better, you're telling the story that it hasn't. Wow. Hear this again. Such a big statement. When you look out there to see if conditions have changed or if, or your, li or if your life has gotten better, you're telling the story that it hasn't changed. Otherwise, you wouldn't be looking out there. If your life's changed, it's changed. If you are in that reality, you're out there. You wouldn't be looking out there to see if they've changed. Right? You're telling a story that it hasn't changed. You are creating the experience of non-fulfillment. You are putting non-fulfillment out there. And there is no out there out there. So it's not so much or at all about constantly affirming, imagining, assuming your new story and wish fulfilled. Rather, it's about not telling the old one. Not putting that old one out there, not looking for that old story, not looking for evidence that your old story is gone, right? It, it, it's, a, it's about not telling your one, not looking for evidence and proof of your new reality and just moving to and standing in it. It's done. You don't need evidence. You are the evidence. Stop projecting a story and creating a reality of differences, right? I, that's what A Course in Miracles was saying here, right? Let me perceive no differences today, right? Stop projecting a story and creating a reality of differences between what is your current manifested reality and your desired outcome, your imagined reality. You're creating those differences between what is the currently manifested reality and your desired reality. Stop looking for them and you won't see them, right? And, and this idea, I have to work on my self-concept, I have to heal my past, all of that creates it. All of that is an old story. You're putting that story out there and that's all it can be. You can only create a reality of working on your self-concept, but never having a, a, what you believe is an ultimate self-concept. Always healing, but never healed. Always healing, but never healed. That's powerful, right? Imagine a firm, I'm different, better, worthy, loved. That's what you're doing. I'm different, I'm other. I'm other. But remember, the more you do that, the more you work on that, the more it, you, you solidify and look for that unworthiness. You look for that, that reason why you're not loved. You look for that, uh, that you're not better, right? You can't be any more, any less than I am. You're already there. I've got news for you. You've been there the whole time. Absolute perfection. That's what Jesus said. That, therefore, you are to be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. That's what Jesus was getting at, right? Constantly in processes implies a departure from the perfect unity that Jesus was talking about with and as source. And you can never depart from whom you really are, though you can create an experience of departing, of non-fulfillment. But you can't depart through who you really are. But you, you put yourself in a process of constantly applying that you are departed from that, that, that greater reality. Reality unfolds with, this is what Byron Katie says. I thought this was so powerful. I might have talked about this in a few videos now. Reality unfolds without desire, bringing with it more beauty, more luxury, more exquisite surprises than imagination could ever devise, meaning your human imagination. Right? That's divine imagination. Remember, your inner being, it's all unfolding. And you just got to allow it. All of that, all that pressure to affirm and to imagine and to create something different and to, and to heal yourself and to, to fix your self-concept creates that reality. You're putting it out there, right? It unfolds without desire. It unf that beauty unfolds within you. Your inner being has got it. Your story's already known. It has been told, it's being told, and will be told forever and ever. What's your story? I am that I am. <laughs> it's, that's, a, that, that's what God said to Moses. That's the story forever and ever. It's already known. It's being known. It'll be known forever. That's why Jesus said before Abraham, I am. It says before Abraham was in this debate about where the comma should be. Forget the comma. Forget was. And just say before Abraham, I am. Before Abraham, you, it, it, that's always been your story. Right? What old story? Be still and know that I'm God. That's what all the ancients were taught. In other words, be still and stop telling your old story. <laughs> stop trying to fix yourself. Stop trying to fix reality. Allow your story to be told and unfold. Your story will be told if, you just be, if you're just still and let it be told. 
right? Instead of struggling with a new story, just stop, just stop perpetuating the old story. Stop bringing that old story with you and the new story will unfold of who you really are. So put your focus, attention, and awareness on your assumption of wish fulfilled and allow your story to unfold. Allow your inner being, your I am, to tell your story. Right? Your inner being is telling your story. Your story unfolds and tells itself. Do you hear that? It tells itself. It's already there. I am is the only reality. That's why Jesus said, who do you say I am? Right? What's your story? Right? In other words, who would you be without your story? Right? I want this. I need this. I'm working on this. My self-concept. I'm healing. Right? Who would you be without your story? Who would you be without saying, I'm John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets? Remember when Jesus asked, who do, you, who do they say the Son of Man is? And his disciples went off on a tangent. Elijah, Jeremiah, John the Baptist, prophet, that represents your old story. You're still telling your old story of who you are. Instead, just drop that like Jesus had said, well, no, forget that. Jesus said, that's what Jesus was saying, forget the old story. Who do you say I am? What, let, that un, let the I am unfold within you. That's your new story. It's your only story. It's before Abraham I am. Do you see it? Without your story, you see reality as it is. Right? Without saying that you're John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets, you see reality as it is with no differences. Let me perceive no differences today. As complete, as, as, as absolute fulfillment. That's powerful. <laughs> so focus on your imagined desire and whatever that is and allow your inner being, your I am, to tell that new story. Wow. Don't, don't bring Jeremiah and the prophets into this. <laughs> and John the Baptist, that's your old story. Jesus said, who do you say I am, guys? Who do you say I am? That's what he's getting at. Right? Who are you? That's the ultimate mastery of your inner speech. When you talk about inner speech, your inner talking, your inner story, well, that's the ultimate mastery. Let your I am be your inner story, your inner speech. That's why Neville Goddard said you can lay aside all processes. When you align your inner speech with your wish fulfilled, with your imagined end, you can lay aside all processes. In other words, when you allow your inner being to tell your story from your imagined end, from your desired end, you can lay aside all processes, right? That Byron Katie says, I love my thoughts. I'm just not tempted to believe them. I love my story. I'm just not tempted to believe it right? Suffering, struggle, unwanted conditions are stories about reality. They are not reality. Wow. When I stopped the insanity, my desired reality came to me. I am your host, Tom Karen, and this is the Be Something Wonderful studio of higher consciousness, where we help you level up and become the best version of yourself. Creators, thank you. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for liking and sharing and commenting on the videos. Thank you for joining the membership channel. There's a link below. If you're interested in seeing the unique content on that channel and and also uh, there's live streams there and there'll be more in the future you can also uh, visit our, our facebook group the be something wonderful ambassadors facebook.com slash groups slash be something wonderful to share insight and guidance and ask for insight and guidance from others and also just go to our website anytime at tomcaron.com or be something wonderful.com creators with great love with great light and infinite gratitude. Until next time, this is Tom Karen with Be Something Wonderful. We'll see you soon.